Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Willie. You're doing something I haven't done in a while. This is a good old-fashioned equipment review. This is the Harlequins clothes from the Trials of Reckoning event going on this week that's actually ending by tomorrow, and we have early maintenance. So for those of you that have not farmed one or two of them, this is hopefully something to maybe give you that extra push or make you not feel bad if you hadn't grinded for it already. So what I'm essentially going to do is talk through, obviously, the object itself, how I think about the value of these, where I think its best applications are, and then just kind of quantifying where I think some of the value is. Now, just speaking broadly, many of the Trials of Reckoning accessories and cloths and armors we've gotten as of late are really tailored more for the bonus units or collaboration units that typically come with the Trials of Reckoning. There was a time where some of the Trials of Reckoning gear was just objectively great for all characters. Less and less true nowadays, and you're seeing that again here with the Final Fantasy VI characters getting some extra emphasis here for some of the benefits. Now, broadly speaking, there's the shield version and the barrier version. No one really crafts the vital versions. The HP value simply just isn't high enough to make a material difference, and we'll see that exaggerated effect in just a couple slides here. But when a piece of equipment comes out, obviously there's a couple of things you want to look at first to see where the relative strengths seem to be. And to me, just kind of at a first glance, obviously 16 defense or 18 spirit are noteworthy in terms of mitigation attributes. When it comes to the Final Fantasy VI specific bonus attributes, the accuracy of 20, I think, is very noteworthy. The Human Killer 10 is fine, but that's not a game-changing modifier. The Crit Evasion of 20, I do think, is relatively noteworthy. Just something, again, to, like, focus on to see if it's worth fitting in. And then finally, the Magic Resistance of 10% is nice but not way above and beyond average from what we typically see. So knowing the, that these are kind of the, the strengths, if you will, of where this equipment lies, we can now dig a little further to see where some of the comparables are, which characters is it best on, and does it really matter? Now, the next thing you got to do, obviously, is look for certain comparables and see which pieces of equipment already exist that might cover many of the things that we're looking at here for potential strengths. And broadly speaking here, I've, I've filtered on the cloths and a couple of accessories that I think have some overlap to kind of get an idea to see how unique parts of this cloth really are. Now, in terms of MR and UR cloths available to characters that are like the Final Fantasy VI units, you have the Mage's Habit, which obviously is slash and strike red, so it does not overlap with it. Similar enough defensive values, but definitely a, a completely different piece of equipment. The Feeds Lacerna is more slash resistance oriented and definitely more spirit oriented so it does not offer that defense build. So again, a different kind of resistance overall and obviously this is a plus six version that we're looking at so even some of these stats aren't apples to apples where the Harlequin's clothes are not at a plus six level yet. You also have the Smart Coat which is our first kind of overlap if you will where yeah you get magic res of eight percent here so that is very much similar the other one is the magic res debuff res and yeah much more spirit if you are going for some of that anti-magic appeal of the harlequin's clothes you also have the mugu cloak which is the more recent tr accessory for yuffie and sephiroth and again here this is where you get that crit evade 20 as some of that overlap you can also look at the shield build here where it's got that hp and 18 defense some similarities but again this obviously does something a, a little bit different just from the acquired ap perspective when you talk about all the characters in the game you also have the Survival Vest, which is basically best in slot for most because of not only the HP, Defense, and Spirit values, but for the Unit Resistance of 10, where that's proven to be one of the best types of resistances in the game. Well, sure, you might get 10% Magic Res from the Harlequin's Close if you're getting a single target Magic Attack, this is equal, if not better, than that 10% magic res because you cannot penetrate single target resistance. So there's still a debate whether this is still best in slot compared to the Har Harlequin's Clothes. The Winter Coat, obviously very much meant for evade units, so it really doesn't have any overlap here uh, at all. It's really just, I put it here for the sake of Locke being in the discussion. The Galmade Cloak, as we know, is more offensively oriented with that magic of 30%. And you have that Human Killer 10, so there is some slight overlap there, as well as the Barrier Build having a high double-digit effect the platinum robe is another honorable mention here where this is by far the most hp you get on one of these that double digit defense different kind of resistance at missile res and that's really it for the cloth and there's one thing i, I want to emphasize we're going to see in a second here these hp values that i keep talking about aren't really as noteworthy as we might think they are at first glance because trust stones have come into the game obviously and i'm going to show you exactly how that affects how we should look at some of this equipment but outside of the cloth when we talk about the accuracy that's there, there's also two exceptional accessories that are very competitive still, where the Silver Rim Spectacles obviously offers a ton of accuracy. Your 36 on the aim build does still offer some offensive upside with the spear penetration of 20. And then the Alexandra ring, kind of the same thing, or obviously 28 accuracy on the main build, but you also get 20 accuracy in the box. But the bottom line is there's not necessarily anything that's exactly like this, but there's enough that's relatively close. And I don't think any of the stats that are on the Harlequin's clothes really jump out compared to things that already exist. So after doing that kind of preliminary overview, it's become more 
clear to me and hopefully to you too that this piece of equipment on non final fantasy 6 units quite frankly isn't all that special the crit evade of 20 the magic res of 10 and then the stats that are on here from an hp defense spirit and crit evade perspective are relatively mundane and can be kind of replaced in various other places but now i just want to take a step back and talk about how does it fit in with trust stones because this is a very materially impacting thing to think about and so we're going to look very high level just at the hp set and the luck stone real quickly and let me talk you through some of this so you don't have to read everything here but the main thing to remember is that when you talk about stat stacking on pieces of equipment from an hp perspective the second highest piece of equipment gets cut in half this is just a walk through what a tmr with trust stones might look like and so on average the hp of many popular magic accessories here the dark fina tmr the shoes the Black Rose Atlanta team are the zombie mask, very popular scene. They're all in that roughly 288, 298 range of HP. And that HP set gives you a total of 300 HP from the main stats, roughly 160 HP per stone. And so when you add up the sources of the innate TMR HP, as well as the 300 HP from the main stats, as well as the HP per stone, this zombie mask, when fully equipped with those HP stats, will give you 1,068 HP. That's a very important number to keep in mind. Now, that eye stone that you equip also gives you upwards of 19 crit of eight. So when you're rolling for that stat, you're very likely going to be above the 12 that you get from the Harlequin's Close. And the luck set, just that same methodology, the two numbers I want you to think of on the bottom here, even though you're losing some of the HP from the main stats, because it's not an HP set, it's a luck set, this total HP of this equipment still ends up being around 768, which in that effect is higher than both the shield and the barrier build here. So realistically speaking, if you assume you have trust stones on one of those accessories, and then you go ahead and equip this cloth, many of these stats are not going to retain their full values. And so HP sets, because they are the second highest of both HP and luck, as we saw, get cut in half. And the creative aid also gets cut in half here. So pragmatically speaking, I'm just going to wipe off vitality here because that build, you know, we don't really entertain. Realistically speaking, this only has 225 HP and six creative aid. Again, still pretty nice, but not game changing per se from a actual stat perspective. Now, also special considerations here, the defense and spirit stats here are very much drastically impacted when you're talking about defense and spirit trust stones defense and spirit only retain 20 percent of their value on the second highest one so if you are doing the shield build here you absolutely have to go for spirit stones and vice versa obviously things get a little more messy when you start thinking of it that way but the bottom line is the main stats here aren't anything vastly better than what we already have and as we go to talk about the box effects here and that's kind of how we refer to these because they're in a box on what of stats well, how do these interact with trust stone passives when you talk about how many trust stone passives can you fit on a character and so you know again my personal opinion the human killer 10 is kind of whatever we don't need to consider that the magic res of 10 is nice but again not necessarily game changing i think it's the accuracy and crit of aid we really want to hone in a level deeper on and so when we talk about what a typical left sign trust stone set of, of passives look like this is where you get your crit evade potential and you get up to crit evade 15. And so if we're talking about what should you typically have on your left side, you should have what we call a universal set, which offers two attributes that are universally good. That's where the name comes from on all characters. So HP and luck of 10% are universally good on everyone. You should have a, a meta set where depending upon where you play, what the most common teams you encounter are, you should hedge your resistances by offering one of each kind and then the third one is kind of a flex set and you have a whole bunch of options for what you might flex into those last two slots you could either a go for something character specific and i think of a character for instance like alphonse he's got negative strike res little weaker on the magic side because he doesn't have spirit so you might make your flex set for alphonse in particular these two or if you're building a defense wall and you want to hedge against a whole wide variety of potential people that will attack you, you could just go for more general meta hedge and add two more elements to your elemental resistance. Or you could kind of what I call do the X factor one where things like status effects and debuffs have a time and a place here where, again, if you're seeing a lot of dark or fire and there's a lot of disable from Dwayne and King Mon and some, some stop from Dark Fina, you might throw on these runes as well. The bottom line is if you're building your trust stones like this, where does Crit Evade 15 fit into it? Now I consider Crit Evade 15 one of the universal set ones, and it's really only those three that I consider universal sets. One of these three often gets left out, and most often it's the Crit Evade 15 that gets left out. So the reason why we look at this is that the Harlequin's Close giving you that Crit Evade 20, well, most of your sets already likely don't include it. So it's basically a free 20 crit evade that you're getting there are some pieces of equipment that give you for instance like celeste's sword 
gives you 15% HP for those couple turns. Well, you already have HP 10% anyway. So the, the difference between HP 10% and HP 15%, basically nothing. So you're not really getting any extra value from equipping that sword. The same isn't said though for something like this where you typically may not be equipping Crit of Aid 15. And so yeah, that equipment giving you a free Crit of Aid 20 is basically just some free extra stats. Now we look at the right side when you consider the accuracy. Where does accuracy 20, you know, potentially overlap with trust stone passives? Typically speaking, the universal priority for where you want to start is either attack magic with 20%, some kind of defense or spirit 10%, Weapon pen 10%, weapon attack types so like slash attack, missile attack, etc. Now again, these are very subjective depending upon the weapon you already have equipped, but these are basically the first ones you want to consider. The second priority, once you've kind of figured that out, is some blend of either the acquired AP at 20%, the dex 15, or the element attack. So lightning attack up 10, wind attack 10, etc. Which leads finally to those kind of call them the tertiary priority. It doesn't mean they're not important, it just means that they're one of the you know, last considerations here is reaction block rate, healing power, and accuracy is among those. Now, again, I use the word priority here in each of these tiers, but it's 100% subjective to the character and the equipment. This is just generally speaking. If you have characters that are healers, you want them healing power 10 as a top priority. If you have characters that already have 80 to 100 defense pen, you might drop the defense pen. Very subjective. But the point is accuracy is very low overall in the consideration of things when you talk about what you want to fit on here. So where do you fit accuracy 10 on the right side? Typically nowhere. Very rarely do I actually see people build in this accuracy 10. When you talk about the crit of aid 20 and the accuracy of 20 from the Final Fantasy VI character perspective, these are basically free stats they're giving you because they're not ones that you already are popularly equipping. Now we talk about which Final Fantasy VI characters in particular probably do best with this. Again, we're going to look at the crit avoidance perspective and the accuracy perspective. This chart that I have graphed is the innate critical avoidance with whatever passives they have innately, a third only one 35% luck vision card, the 15% the luck trust stone set. So the left side set, three stones of luck, and then a 10% luck passive. The idea being if you're kind of stress testing your luck, either for accuracy or crit avoid or whatever maybe, this is where those four characters fall over on the gradient. And so from a crit avoidance perspective, luck being at minimum a very high luck unit. Not in, I'm not including a second luck vision card here. He is top end of the spectrum already from a crit avoid perspective. And obviously you have to weigh the pros and cons of not equipping a piece of evasion gear, which you likely wouldn't do. You would have evasion gear on him. So this cloth really isn't applicable to Locke, where his accuracy crit avoid is already sky high and doesn't really fit with this evasion. Which process elimination, you're left with Kefka, Terra, and Celeste. Now Kefka, a little bit below average here on the crit avoid, but not horribly bad. But Terra and Celeste, and Celeste in particular, given that she's a tank and taking a lot of damage here, the more often she's getting critically hit, the more damage she's going to take. So this is a notable thing for her where you might be able to give her a free 20% crit evasion as well as for Kefka. And Terra too, but we're going to talk about her in a second here, where we talk about accuracy now. And this is accuracy, again, the same metrics, 31, 35% luck vision card, a 15% luck trust on set, and a 10% luck passive. Where do these characters end up from an overall accuracy? It's obviously relatively similar, because again, both of those metrics scale very directly with, with luck stat overall and so from an accuracy perspective not worried about lock kefka is not an accurate unit by any means and has no guaranteed hit so yeah accuracy from a piece of equipment is very important to him and terra and celeste not accurate at all but at least terra has those 100 percent guaranteed hit chance abilities so you ask the question is the accuracy really necessary for terra and the answer is probably not really she's going to be spamming meltdown anyway but for celeste most definitely, again, you're getting basically a free 20 accuracy for her where she's not equipping that on her trust stone passives already. Now, when we talk about is it enough accuracy? Is it enough crit avoid? That is a whole other presentation because you could put them up against 10 different builds of what you run your Celeste and Kefka with. You could put them up against three different versions of evasion teams and they could all have wildly different evasion. Same thing for critical hit teams, your crit rates could be all over the place. When we talk generally speaking, what are some of the takeaways here? You know, pragmatically speaking, this gear is help here to help bump up the Final Fantasy VI units. As we saw, the stats aren't crazy impressive. It's really having all of those things together in the box stat that really gives the value. And process elimination, Kefka and Celeste are really the primary benefactors here when you talk about crit evade and the accuracy and what they need and what they can do with it. And in my opinion, still not a best in slot piece of equipment for them though, because of the alternatives where again, if you look at Alex ring and the silver rim of spectacles, not only are both of those a very superior from an accuracy perspective, but B 
aren't a huge fall off from the HP perspective either. Yes, you lose some of the defense and spirit, but the Alex Ring has 5% all element res, which when you compare to the magic resistance, you know, 5% all element, 10% magic res, although it's half the amount, you're still hedging some of the amount. You may lose the human killer 10, that's fine, but Alex Ring has increased crit rate. And the Silver Moon Spectacles have the Spear Pen, so you're still technically going to have some offensive output there. But both of these are very likely still best in slot for what you want to do to well round your character. The Magic Res on the Harlequin Close is really only as good as the opponents you're facing as well, which makes this kind of, not niche, but subjective. And Kefka and Celeste are already positive 15% to Magic Res anyway. So although, yes, more might be better, that's specific to your meta, and they're already relatively strong anyway, that's not really solving a problem that they necessarily have. Uh, the Human Killer 10 is nice, but in my opinion, not a game-changing modifier by any means. And then finally, the Crit of 8 is still, at the end of the day, a subjective amount of value, where it's really only as good as the hit rates of your opponents that you're facing. That being said, Celeste is so low, she's probably getting critically hit by most things, so that 20% does help her a lot. But at the end of the day, this is a semi-niche piece of equipment for either Kefka or Celeste. If you're a completionist, I would recommend having one of each of both the barrier and shield build. That way you can kind of help some flexibility with your gearing. But even then, I'm not really expecting a ton of usage out of this, but I definitely think that it has its value in certain situations where you're really trying to critically think about the team you're on and what you're facing. End result, for those that are grinding for it, I'm sure you'll probably use it once or twice eventually on either one of those units. And if you're not using any of those units, then don't worry, you're not missing out on much by missing this. Because at the end of the day, I don't think it's really going to change anything from a total game perspective. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll talk to you all soon.